Hello everybody and welcome to this new video about Coupang. So today I want to analyze Coupang stock and figure out whether uh, it's a stock I'm interested in and whether I think it's going to be a good investment or not in relation to the other type of stocks in the same space. So what is Coupang? Coupang is a super e-commerce app in South Korea. Think of it as the Amazon website in the US and the Amazon app in the US. They are, as they say, building the future of commerce, right? Very similar to the retail business of Amazon. They have 100 fulfillment centers in South Korea and 70% of Koreans live within seven miles of a fulfillment center. Um, and they deliver a bunch of stuff, including groceries and we'll see why delivering groceries is not a good idea when it comes to gross marginal later on because there's not a lot of money to be made when you deliver groceries but we'll see this business so before i go into it so it's it's simply the amazon of south korea it, it's it's almost a copy of amazon uh fr frank frankly they use uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning to predict demand spikes before they happen to ship products between warehouses before they estimate there's going to be demand uh, they are using technology to break the typical trade-off of retail the trade-off between speed convenience and uh inexpensiveness of the products right they're they're, they're getting the best of both worlds, the best of proximity, I get it quickly delivered, but also get the choice of online and also get it cheap. They bring it all together in one compelling value proposition for customers. Um, they also talk a lot about being customer centric and creating a highly customer centric company. Um, they have a day one culture, a startup culture of a culture. Um, when you read about their culture is very similar to Amazon, but the similarities to Amazon actually don't stop there. Uh, it even goes to their offering. So in Amazon, in the US, right, we have Amazon, Amazon Prime. Uh, and in uh, in Korea, they have Kuping, Kuping Rocket Wow, uh, which I'm, I must say, it's it's a fun, it's it's, it's uh, funny to say. They have Rocket Wow. They have Rocket Wow in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Korea, uh, which is which is a copy of, uh, I mean, it's funny marketing. It's, it's a copy of... Uh, of Amazon, right? It's Amazon Prime. They do the same thing, right? You have free shipping, free same day delivery, right? So that's a pure copy of Amazon. And then um, you have exclusive discounts, right? We can think about the Amazon Prime days. And then, and this is this is where the copy even gets even gets gets better, is you have video streaming uh, where they have their own streaming service. Uh, and one note I want to make here is Coupang oftentimes is associated as a social commerce website, but when I when I read about it, they largely moved away uh, uh, from from uh, from uh, the social commerce website. It seems like website like we name price in Korea seem to be do, uh, dealing with social commerce now, and and Coupang kind of moved away from that from what I'm getting. But what else? What else? What can I say about Coupang? Well, Coupang just like Amazon in the US has a tremendous physical moat. And then investing in the company is all about, you know, figuring out how much money you want to put behind that moat. Because it's true that because they've invested billions of dollars in, in, in 100 plus warehouses, they invest in robotics, AI, machine learning. It's tough to figure out a competitor and how a competitor could compete with them without taking the years and without taking the billions of dollars necessary to create an equivalent physical moat to compete against them. So, so I think that they, I, I think they, they are a solid company from a competitive from a competitive advantage standpoint. They have a competitive advantage with that moat. Um, it's also not worthy to say that they are pure play e-commerce, right? Amazon in the U.S. has Amazon Web Services, and a lot of people buy Amazon only for Amazon Web Services. No, not Coupang. Coupang is ninety six percent e-commerce like electronic retail is most of what Coupang does and some people might say it's 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 kind of a less attractive part of the business um, because there's very little margins at least before you ramp up the product and raise your prices there's very little margin um, and so we can say we're doing very well 27 percent year over year growth on a forex neutral basis i.e in korean one but there's been a problem. There's been a problem, which is called the Fed, right? The Fed has raised interest rates. And when you raise interest rates, the, when the value of a dollar shot up. And actually, if you adjust for the increase in value of a dollar, they only grow in dollars. They only, they only grew 27% over a year. Only, uh, sorry, on, only 10%. They only grew 10%. They grew 27% forex adjusted 
10%. So let me just show you what happened a little bit with the one, which is very important because this company is most of the business of this company comes from from the from Korea. So most of the business is, is in Korean one. And the Korean one has been a roller coaster. And this is meaningful for business. So for example, if you if 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 you go from April 2020 to say um December of 2020, you had a sharp increase in the value of the Korean one as the US was entering monetary printing, right? 12%. So without doing anything, a company like Coupang, if it had IPO back then, would have seen a 12% increase in its revenue without doing anything. But look at this. And this is why they've been hurt. The the dollar, the value of the one compared to the dollar has has dropped, has dropped drastically. 23%, so which means that the one lost 23% of its value compared to the dollar. So when, when the currency, when the revenue that you're taking in is taken in a currency that loses 23% of its value against the US dollar, that's going to hurt your sales in US dollars. And you know, if you're located in the US or if most of your investments are in dollars, you care about dollars and how many dollars you get back. So this is a company that has been hurt by foreign exchange rates. And, and I think this volatility is likely to continue, uh, although to the upside going forward, to the upside from the standpoint of if you live in the US because I believe monetary printing will be resumed but this is an additional risk that we have to take into account for for Korea and that risk is particularly acute because this company only focuses on the Korean market so that's a, that's a very acute risk I believe let me move on so revenue growth so without foreign exchange rates revenue growth was amazing at 27% absolutely love that that's great that's very close to my threshold of 30% 10% only with foreign exchange. Um, and, you know, we could see those numbers go up. But if you look, you know, it's 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 uh, e-commerce is, 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 is the future, right? The, the world is headed towards e-commerce. And they have a massive, fast-growing e-commerce market in front of them. Uh, and you can see that uh, within, within a matter of three more years, right, two more years, uh, their, their, the size of their market e-commerce is, expect, is expected to go by 30%. So there is no doubt that this is a company that is riding with the megatrends, not against the megatrends. Um, but um, w when exploiting these megatrends, uh, you know, Coupang is not the only one. They're competing against other competitors. First of all, I don't want to undermine uh, traditional retail uh, entirely, um, in in a lot of countries, I believe I believe there's a lot of cultural shopping that goes on, uh, and 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 retail is probably going to remain strong. Physical retail uh, and the change is probably not going as fast uh, as um, as it is going, say uh, as it was going, say in 2020. So 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 let's just remember that physical retail is going to fight this, and you know lo local markets are going to fight this and try to keep people to put to to shop face to face especially for groceries especially if you're focusing on groceries i think traditional retail still has a few cards to play um and you have competition in the in in um in the e-commerce space as well you have g market 11th street cacao which are which are big big competitors and so the best i could find about the market share of coupang is 15 percent so 15 percent we're not we're not quite amazon like share in the us just yet we're growing fast at 27 percent, but we're not quite there just yet Let's look at concentration, which could be a headwind. South Korea, unfortunately, when you invest in a South Korean stock, you have to think about geopolitics. There's always those fears in the market that add more volatility. And the currency itself, the fact that you're dealing with a single currency against the US dollar, you could have some very idiosyncratic factors to Korea that may mess up your revenue growth on the, to the upside or to the downside just because of these currency movements. Uh, now the mega trend is still there, right? E-commerce is still a big mega trend. I want I want to add two more uh, mega trends to this. First of all, is have you heard of the Korean miracle, which is which is a um, kind of of a of a reference to talk about the the astounding economic growth that Korea has had. There's no denying that Korea as a market has grown much faster than the rest of the world. It's grown very fast. Not perhaps not as fast as China, but it's grown very, very fast. And so I think this company deserves a few extra points for being in a very, very high growth market with very high GDP. And if you if you look at this, yeah, it's a Korean miracle and the, the speed at which this country is growing is still really, really fast. Um, 
um, e e even even by say emerging market standards, which Korea is kind of a hybrid. Korea Korea is not an emerging market anymore. Um, they are also focusing on Taiwan and Japan. Of course, Chinese companies don't do business in Taiwan. Not, it's not like they can, uh, but uh, they uh, they are focusing on on Japan and Taiwan. And I, I believe I, I, I believe these are big big opportunities here. Um, okay, what what about uh, revenue growth? His revenue growth healthy. Uh, yes, uh, I think they've had few acquisitions, but not nothing big. Uh, and as far as uh, operating expenses, a share of revenue, these are trending down. I could not find the specific numbers. I did not dig deep enough into the specific numbers, but reading the investor letter, it's clear that the current CEO is focused on profitability and maximizing profitability as much as possible. Any near-term bankruptcy risk? Okay, this is not very good here. They have $2.9 billion of cash on balance sheet. And if you look at how much negative free cash flow they've had the last quarter Q3, in Q3 they had 407 million of negative free cash flow. That's the highest that they've had in five years. And so we definitely want to see trending down, you know, because that free cash flow is taking away from the cash. So the corporation is draining its cash to finance its growth. And, and, you know, that growth is even muted because of currency movements. So uh, they can't increase that number too much. If they increase that number, then we're getting into dangerous ter territory. Like this is this is two years. This is two years if they have to keep this this um, this loss rate here, this negative cash flow rate. So we need to see trend this, trend, this trending down. This is one of the one of the closer companies that I've seen to running out of cash uh, in actually any other companies that I look at on this channel. So this is something we need to take into account. Debt is good. They they uh, they have uh, some debt, right? But much of that debt is leases on buildings. So that debt is more of an accounting artifact or, or an issue with, with gap accounting and less of, of true debt because you're really leasing a building, but you have to enter it as debt on your balance sheet. So the debt is okay to me. As far as traditional debt that you have to roll over, which is what we would count here, they only have $561 million of traditional debt. So I believe that company is okay from the standpoint of debt. Um, moving, moving, moving on to other metrics, moving on to other metrics, their gross profit margin is 21%. Now, this is pretty bad. 21%, that is pretty bad. Um, and that's what happens. That's what happens when you do retail, especially fresh groceries. Uh, as a comparison, a company that does not do, say, things like fresh groceries, Mercado Libre in Brazil has 53%. So 53% is much, much, much better. Um, and this is this is also lower than the 39% of SC. I do not know why gross, why, why gross profit margin is very low. If you read the last letter, you can see that the CEO is trying to address that by increasing gross profit um, for the company, but those margins are very low. Dilution. There has been no dilution. This, this company is an A star when it comes to dilution, aside from the IPO day, there has been no dilution. Uh, you almost wonder whether you would prefer some dilution to save that cash. Because yeah, if you don't have dilution, that means you don't give any stock-based compensation. But if you don't give any stock-based compensation, you have to give a lot of cash out and that's risky for the business. So dilution is, is, um, is very, very good here. Own, insider ownership 10%, 10% is fine, um, and the company is still founder-led, but the CEO is focusing on international efforts and international developments, so depending on whether you invest in this company just for the South Korean market or for other market, this may be a positive or a negative, but the, the CEO has definitely more of a corporate overarching role now and less of a day-to-day -day Korean operations role. Revenue per employee is medium at um, 299,000. It's actually it's actually pretty pretty good. The, their productivity numbers are pretty good. Now I'm almost done with my analysis, but there is another major negative that I want to say about Coupang, which is uh, you may be wondering what what's happening with digital payments because if you if you follow if you follow these these future of e-commerce stocks, you know there's typically a payment associated with them. Um, and this is this is I, I really don't like this about Coupang. Um, so Coupang, and you know, there's a lot of negatives, right? But that that negative, that low gross margin, probably has something to do with the fact that they spun off, they spun off their pay division. Uh, it's important to know that they had under the same umbrella Coupang Pay, and the CEO spun it off prior to the IPO, and. 
I think this is this is uh, this is a, this is a red flag for a business because it's a great way for a CEO to keep a share of the most exciting business for himself. That's really a great way for him to do that. But he spun off a very very exciting part of Couping and the Couping business, which is Couping Pay, which Couping Pay's growth is definitely attached to Couping. Right? You can't grow. You can't grow Coupang Pay without Coupang. So Coupang grows Coupang Pay, but Coupang Pay and all the benefits of Coupang Pay and that digital wallet is going to go to a separate company and not to the shareholders of Coupang. And Coupang, Coupang Pay or Coupe is a top three digital wallet in Korea. Now, that would have been huge potential to have this within within Coupang, but we don't. It's a shame that it's not included. It's a shame that Coupang Pay is not included within Coupang. If you've seen my analysis of, of, of uh, C-Limited yesterday, you know that uh, C-Money at C-Limited is growing at 150% growth rate. And, and we're as a C-shareholder, you're very happy to have C-Money and Shopee Pay included. If you study Mercado Libre, you know that Mercado Libre has Mercado, Mercado Pago, and you're very happy to have Mercado Pago included in Mercado Libre because, again, that's a fintech that's growing really, really, really fast. Um, so this is a major negative for Couping, the fact that they decoupled the payment app from the main website, and I absolutely do not like that. So let me conclude with what I'm doing with this stock. So first of all, the stock's down 67%. Um, like most stocks, right? It's almost it's, it's almost as if there is no no distinction between innovation stocks. So let me first say um, what I believe in. My belief: this is the valuation. This is the same as what I posted yesterday for C Limited. Uh, you can see the valuation of, of Coupang is flattering in some metrics, not as flattering in other metrics. But let's go. So Coupang is a solid company, right? It's at the heart of a mega trend, and it seems to be in a winning position, and it's doing that in a high growth country, Korea. Thus, I believe this is a good investment, I believe, and it will likely outperform the indices. However, compared to many of the stocks that I cover on the channel, I think Coupang is expensive right now, especially given the risks, right? If you look at Mercado Libre, Mercado Libre has 49% growth. That's my estimate of their growth going forward. Uh, and they have a 53% gross margin and you get the fintech business, right? Coupang had 10% growth uh, forex, uh, forex adjusted. Now, notice I, notice I was very kind in my analysis here, and I gave them 27% because 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 uh, that's what analysts are predicting, and I believe it's going to go back up because they really got, got a headwind with that currency movement. So I was very generous here. But if I was putting 10% here, this company would be the most undervalued in, in my framework, or almost relatively the most undervalued in my framework here. So let's let's just keep in mind that I've been very, very generous with Coupang. Their gross margin is 21%, which is really, really bad. And you don't have the fintech business. You don't have the fintech business. And if you compare this to C-Limited, and C-Limited, I'll speak up for C-Limited here, is C-Limited, the e-commerce division grew 39%, right? Their their, um, payments division grew 150%. The reason why e-commerce grow, why C-Limited's uh, growth here is so tiny is because of their gaming division that has been under attack and their product has been banned. That's the reason why. Otherwise, if you look at the underlying e-commerce business and if you look at the uh, underlying payments business, they are doing much, 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 much better than Coupang. And I mean, Coupang, you don't have access to your fintech business, so you, so you don't know. And Shopify, Shopify, you know, is the U.S. market is a specific positioning. Um, I don't think it can be compared directly, even though I put it in, in this valuation just for our information. I don't think Shopify can be compared directly to these three companies. These three companies can definitely be compared directly. And if I were to rank them, I would put Mercado Libre number one, C Limited number two, close suck on C Limited, and Coupang is, a, is to me a definite number three here. Um, and so what will I be doing with Coupang? Well, I will not be buying Coupang and I will not be investing in Coupang, mostly because of the risks I've outlined. And I, I, I have, a, I have, I have a, a large position in Mercado Libre. I have a smaller position in C Limited. I have a smaller position in Shopify. Uh, I believe in these three companies are a better position than, than Coupang. Now, this is not investment advice. 
of course. Um, and, you know, perhaps I'm wrong. I may totally be wrong. Maybe I have a hard time understanding uh, the specifics of a Korean market, which is a very, very different market. Uh, I may be missing something out. Um, uh, and, and, and also, Coupang in the short term, it depends on your time horizon. Like, if you like, if you look at it short term, I can easily see Coupang go up in the short term because of the Forex uh, currency movements, because of foreign exchange movements and the US likely easing rates in the second half of 2023, which would greatly benefit Coupang because all of a sudden, the US US currency will grow weaker and it would show outstanding growth numbers for Coupang in terms of revenue growth. And again, you know, I'll, I'll stop it. Why leave out Coupang Pay? You know, to me, to me, this is kind of a deal breaker uh, that they left that out. If they have left, if they had left that in, I would be much more interested in the stock. But the fact that they left it out, I believe, is a, is a deal breaker because I believe the, the payments revolution, you know, the the attack that these digital wallets are leading against credit card companies and debit card companies, I believe it's this mega trend as well. And it would be nice to have part of that mega trend too. You don't have it with Coupang and it's just it's just sad. So it would have been nice to see it left in the business that created it. Why did, why, why was it spun off? Anyways, um, thank you so much for watching uh, this video. Um, this was not investment advice, this is just entertainment. Thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.